You have kids in the same city who like to sing and they're singing together. This should be obvious, but it's definitely not. people both on the Palestinian side and on the Israeli side who are very suspicious of or totally against or trying to undermine what we're doing and I think that it's important that we do it anyway. Peace was a really important experience for me as far as totally changing the course of, of my life. I was a music counselor at Seeds and I was theorizing basically how music worked in parallel with dialogue at camp to create a transformative experience. And then I thought, okay, so this works at a summer camp in Maine where you can control all the variables and nobody can leave, but could this work on the ground in Jerusalem where you control none of the variables and everyone is being told to leave all the time and could just decide not to come back, you know, every week? And that was basically my thesis was like, can this kind of model be replicated on the ground in a sustained way? And then I thought I had basically done too much work on it not to give it a shot. So I moved to Jerusalem after graduating and started the chorus. In 2014, one of the wars in Gaza and there were rockets falling on Jerusalem and there were teenagers being targeted and being killed on both sides and one of whom was uh, Mohammed Abu Khader, who is a Palestinian from East Jerusalem who, who was burned alive by Jewish extremists. The day after that happened, obviously there was so much violence and anger and retaliation in Jerusalem, particularly in this neighborhood, Shuafat, where Mohammed Abu Khader was from. And one of our singers was also from, like around the corner from his house. And we happened to have a rehearsal the next day for our first tour, which obviously I had to be like, please don't come if you're gonna be in danger. You know, obviously don't put your life in danger to come to rehearsal. But I decided to hold the rehearsal anyway for those who could come, because I thought it was an important statement that we be open for business anyway, even just for those who, who feel comfortable. So anyway, we're having rehearsal, and then this girl from Shuafat walks in the door, and, and her neighborhood had been totally shut down and like under curfew. So I was like, how did you get here? How did you get to rehearsal? I mean, thank God you're safe. And she said, well, I was sitting in my house and listening to all the gunshots and smelling the tear gas, and I was just kind of sitting in my living room going crazy. And so I left, and I walked down the street, and the soldiers tried to stop me, but I ran away, and here's exactly where I want to be. What I'm doing is really taking their energy and their relentless positivity and sort of channeling it. They inspire me like every time. Like that's, that's ultimately what keeps me going because it's super hard and it's really frustrating most of the time to, to do this kind of work. But ultimately it's worth it. You know, and like those are the experiences really when you see them and how happy and proud they are to be singing and to be singing together, particularly sort of on a big stage like here at Forbes or like on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert or at the Kennedy Center or on BBC or wherever, that is really the best feeling to feel like I've helped raise their voices and amplify themselves. Mm -hmm.